Hi there. If you already know how to make your robot follow a line, but struggle when the course gets tricky with multiple turns and junctions, then this video is for you. We'll look at smart strategies for handling multiple turns, zigzag lines, dotted lines, and even line color changes from black to white. You will also learn how to skip junctions, deal with different angles, and avoid the most common line following problems. We'll finish with something a little more advanced, a MyBlock that uses data saved in a list to guide your robot through a complex network of lines with precision. We can't just use a line follower to deal with corners and junctions. We have to detect the corner or junction and tell the robot what to do. To navigate a complex course, we will need a series of moves and turns. OK, now let's look at the details. First, we need a turn. This is a very simple MyBlock, which will turn the robot through the angle specified. The wheels turn in opposite directions to give a spin turn. Parameter speed sets the motor speed in percent. Angle is positive for clockwise and negative for anti-clockwise. This factor converts motor rotation degrees to robot rotation degrees and is equal to the distance between the wheels divided by the wheel diameter. Now we need a line follow my block which will stop at a junction. This my block has a proportional line follower inside a repeat until loop. It uses two light sensors so it can detect left and right junctions. It will follow a line until one or both sensors detects a black line at a junction or corner. After the detection, it drives straight ahead for the distance between the sensors and the wheels so that the wheels are on the line ready to turn. OK, so now we have a line follower which stops at junctions and a turn which turns any angle. Let's see if we can use them to navigate this part of the course. We start OK. Whoops, we turn too soon. Too soon again. We need to give the robot time to get back on the line after a turn so that the sensors don't immediately detect black and think it's the next junction. To do this, we need a my block which will line follow for a distance. We convert the distance from centimeters to degrees using the factor 360 divided by the wheel circumference. We save the motor starting position and line follow until we have completed the distance. Now we need to add this my block to the LF stop black my block so that we line follow for a short distance before we start looking for the next junction. This gives us a reliable way to line follow and turn which we can use for a complex course. Two centimeters was enough distance for the robot to get back on the line. For this part of the course, we can combine a turn block and a line follow block to make a my block which can sense a corner and decide which way to turn. First, we allow two centimeters to get on the line. Then we line follow until the sensor sees a corner. We set the variable LR to L for a left turn or R for a right turn. The robot moves 8 centimeters to bring the wheels to the corner. Then we turn 90 degrees left or right, depending on variable LR. To complete the 8 turns, we can use the my block 8 times directly in a program or use a repeat 8 times loop to get the same result. OK, that was my block LF weight turn LR90. It can drive up to and turn at left or right corners. Now we will look at a my block which can stop at any corner or junction ready to turn in any direction. First we line follow for the distance in parameter weight centimeters. This gives the robots time to get on the line after a turn and can also be used to ignore junctions for a given distance. The parameter stop condition decides where the robot should stop. For R it will stop when the right sensor sees black, for L the left sensor and for B, both sensors have to be on black. The robot will move until the stop condition is reached. Here the variable stop is set to zero, ready for the next time. And we move the eight centimeters to position the wheels on the junction. Using this my block and the turn my block, we can navigate most obstacles. Here we first set parameter weight centimeters to 40, so we ignore the first junctions. Then we turn and set stop condition to R. This will ignore all junctions until we see a right turn, where we turn and carry on with the program. 
The next My Block has a different way to skip junctions. The parameter number specifies which junction to stop at. For example, if number is three, the robot will stop at the third junction. The variable junctions counts how many junctions have been seen. It is first set to zero, then the robot line follows for 0.3 seconds to make sure it is on the line. It then continues to line follow and looks for junctions. Each time a junction is seen, the junctions variable is increased. When junctions equals number, the robot moves 8 centimeters to center the wheels on the line and stops. This short program uses a combination of LF stop junction number and turn my blocks to complete a part of the course. It skips over several junctions by using the number parameter. Now let's look at a dotted line. A simple way to deal with this is to use the my block LF weight black line which line follows for a distance set by weight centimeters and then moves until the stop condition is seen. With weight CM at 30 centimeters, we don't start looking for the stop condition until the dotted line is finished. The line follower will follow the black parts of the line and move straight ahead on the white parts as both sensors will be on white and the error will be zero. Okay, let's move on to dealing with a white line between two black areas. If we use the LF weight black line my block, something goes wrong. The robot can't follow the line. We need to change the sense of the correction. One way to do this is to swap the plus and minus signs in the line follower. I have made a separate my block to do this. With this my block, the robot has no problem following the white line. Now we will look at a my block which navigates a course using instructions saved in a list. When the my block starts, the robot first moves three centimeters to make sure it is on the line and then drives up to the first junction where it stops. The variable event counter is increased by one and the variable angle is set to the value saved in item one of the list. This gives the number of degrees to turn, positive for clockwise, negative for anti-clockwise. A value of zero means no direction change. The robot moves eight centimeters to position the wheels on the junction and turns through the angle given. It then moves to the next junction where it repeats the procedure using item two in the list. When all items in the list have been processed, it finally stops. The complete program has only an init my block to set some variables, instruction list to save the values in the list, and LF list to carry out the instructions. This run of 22 instructions is shown at twice the actual speed. It uses angles of plus and minus 90 degrees, plus and minus 45 degrees, and zero degrees to drive straight ahead. Okay, to finish with, I will give a quick overview of the line follower my blocks and explain what they can be used for. LF distance moves for a fixed distance in centimeters and stops. LF weight stop black moves to the next junction and stops with the wheels on the junction ready to turn. LF weight turn LR90 navigates left and right 90 degree corners and senses which way to turn. LF weight black line stops at the next right, left or both sides junction depending on the RLB parameter. LF weight white line is the same as LF weight black line except that it follows a white line. LF stop junction number stops at the specified junction. LF list follows instructions saved in a list. Well, I hope you found something of interest there. Perhaps you need a reliable way to stop at a junction, turn and continue. Or maybe using a list to control the robot is an idea you'd like to try. I'm always ready to try and answer any questions you may have. Hope to see you next time.